Hello everybody, AJ Ryzik here, and today we're taking a look at the Evolution Linux installer. This installer is for installing Arch Linux on your system, and it makes it a whole lot easier to install Arch. For those of you that have never installed Arch, it is a very time-consuming process. I wouldn't say difficult. Uh, you do need to understand your system and and how various things work within not only within Arch but within within Linux itself. Um, but the big deal with with Arch is it's just very time-consuming to set everything up. Now the plus side of that is when you do that Arch installation, um, everything is exactly the way you want it, and, and that has always been my my issue with just about every other distribution out there. In that, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff that you can customize, but uh, you know, there is still there was that one little thing that I couldn't change, and you're just kind of stuck with it because that's the way such and such distribution was. In the case of Arch, you can go and essentially customize every little thing, uh, and you know, like I said, the the downside to it was very time consuming to do it. Now, the this Evolution installer. Um, it greatly simplifies that. It's just slightly more difficult than installing, say, your run-of-the-mill Ubuntu-based distribution or, you know, any of those types of in, uh, of, uh, of uh, distributions that have a, a regular installer. Um, and I'm just going to show you real quick before before we get going. Um, you know, right here I've got the uh, I've got the Evolution homepage. I'll include a link for that so you can go and take a look at that and also it has has the downloads there they've got forums uh, a little bit about uh, the installer and all that kind of stuff um, news you know all about the uh, you know updates and that sort of thing the other thing I'll reference to you is the arch wiki which is a good source of information on how various things work in arch you know uh, if you need a little assistance with, you know, say again, your printer drivers installed, that sort of thing, this will help you along the way. One final thing, and I should have pulled it up on uh, on my browser here, but I didn't. But I will throw a link down below for it as well. Um, not too long ago, Matthew Moore, over at his channel, he did a walkthrough walkthrough of a of an arch installation using um, uh, using the same evolution uh, installer and he also prepared like a, a think of it as a list of notes for um, you know if you need to do this here's how you do it all that kind of stuff um, enabling the arch user repositories um, uh, you know all kinds of stuff like that now he is a very big uh, XFCE fan so a lot of the stuff in his notes pertains specifically to using XFCE however there is some other general stuff that would apply to you know just about any installation so I'll throw a link up to to uh, to his video so you can go and take a look at that as well if you're not a subscriber over his channel be sure to check his uh, his channel out and subscribe it's a very good source of information on uh, you know all things Linux so anyway what uh, what we're looking at here this is my uh, my arch installation using evolution um, for those of you that follow me on Google Plus I was talking about it on Friday and Saturday uh, installation went really really easy uh, you know first time out of the bat it took me about 45 minutes to do the entire installation um, and you know part of that is because you know I'm going through their installation guide while I'm doing the installation um, so you know once you've done it once you probably knock that time down to 15 20 minutes so just slightly more difficult than a regular say Ubuntu installation uh, but fairly easy to go um, what I installed as you can see here this is uh, GNOME 314 um, I could have gone and enabled the testing repository so I could go ahead and run GNOME 316 but 
you know, it, probably within the next week or so, we're going to see 316 in the stable uh, uh, repositories for art. So, you know, what's one week? Um, and I've already gotten to take a look at three four or three sixteen uh playing with the Fedora betas and alphas so you know i'm I'm more than happy just to you know wait for it to be stable <laughs> anyway let's go and we will do an installation let me move this out of the way and I'll kind of walk you through a installation with uh, evolution so you can see how easy it is. Let me fire up GNOME boxes here. All right, so here we are at. Uh, I've got. I'm running this in VirtualBox so that you can see the whole installation process. And this is the opening screen that you will be greeted with when firing up the Evolution installer. So we're going to boot Evo Linux. And the. Uh, you know the installation process uh, it's kind of a I would think of it as a as a hybrid between uh, command line and uh, and graphical you know it's real basic uh, 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 graphical installation uh, so for those of us that remember what graphical uh, installers and and what not look like back in the 90s that's kind of what we've got here let me go and slide this down just a little bit so you can see all right here on the screen you've got right click to uh, for the desktop menu and then um, you know, use alt I for the installer you've also got an online installation guide hardware information pull up the terminal restart or shut down so let's go and we'll do alt I to fire up the installer And like when I did the installation on my desktop, since it was the first time that I used this, you know, I opened up the terminal and then right beside it, I had the online installation guide. Worked out great. Okay, choose whether you want to use, want to do stable or uh, developmental. Uh, I chose stable. And English, yep, that's my language. And it's starting to synchronize packages. Okay. So first step is we're going to prepare our installation. Set desktop keyboard layout. And I want United States. Let's go U.S. English. There we go. And this is kind of optional, but it will speed up your installation, and that is configuring your installer mirror list. So I'm going to generate a list by country. Let's again go to United States. And it'll generate the list, and you can take a look at it, even edit it if you like. I'm just going to stick with it the way it is. Do you want to use this? Generated list, yes. Done. List devices, not really much to see here since I'm doing this in VirtualBox. Um, just our SDA hard drive. All right, we're going to partition the disk at this point. Click OK. And obviously, this is going to be different depending on you know how many hard drives you got, current partitions, all that kind of stuff. Since we're doing this in VirtualBox, there's you know only one drive, SDA. And you have an option between using Gparted and a couple other tools. Um, as far as I'm concerned, there's not... For most people, um, Gparted is going to be just fine. So, just to create a partition table first. And now we will go and create a new partition. 
Now, most of the time, let's see here. Wait a second. Okay, there's our size. Make it EX4. Okay, and apply. Now, most of the time when I'm doing an installation, I'll do a separate um, root drive, and then I'll also do a separate home folder. Uh, you know, just for the purpose of the demonstration, I'm just going to do it all in one. Um, but, you know, however you normally set up your partitions, you know, do it basically the same way. Uh, logical volume management, that's optional. Don't really need to bother with that. Mount partitions. So here you would mount all your various partitions. And I want ext4. Okay. Mount successful. Do you want a swap file? I'm using none. And now back to the main menu. All right, we're going to install our base. Uh, refresh Pacman keys. Okay, now we'll install our base. Do you want latest kernel, kernel plus base development, or the LTS kernel, or LTS kernel plus base development? Uh, for my my main desktop, I did latest kernel plus base development. I'm just going to do latest kernel here. Uh, just you know, time savings. All right, so base is installed. We'll now install our bootloader. Now you have a choice between Grub2 and SysLinux. I went ahead and went with Grub2. And just give it a little time to install. Install on the same device hard drive as root, yes. Okay, so now we've got install our wireless device firmware. Okay, and yeah, here's one of those points where it would be, um, you know, good to know what your wireless drive devices are. Um, you can, you know, just come down here and click all, and it'll install them all for you. So, you know, if you want, if you don't know your device, you want to play it safe, just do all. <laughs> okay, so got all that done, and now we'll go back. Okay, we got that done. Okay, now we're going to configure our base. First, we need to generate our fstab. And the recommended uh, uh, fstab uh, formatting is the UUID, and that's what what uh, um, you know what I used and. I don't know. There, I guess there are situations where either uh, the user-defined or a partition code would would be advantageous. But uh, me, I think that the UUID is just the way to go. So select that. Now we're going to select our host name, and this is the name used to identify the system on a network. I'm just going to stick with the default Evo. You can put whatever you want in there. Um, just follow the instructions as far as it's restricted to alphanumeric characters can contain a hyphen but not at the start or end and no longer than 63 characters set time zone and first you want to pick your your uh, continent so we'll do that and then you can scroll through the list here and I will go to New York because that is my time zone set time zone is American New York yes set the hardware clock UTC or local time um, this is one of those things where if you are if you're dual booting with Windows uh, it might be advantageous to go with local time uh, otherwise definitely go with UTC even if you are dual booting you may want to stick with UTC um, that's what I always stick with alright set system locale okay so I had to pause the video for a second so I could look up in the online installation guide uh, the uh, my locale code and for the US it is en underscore us dot utf dash eight um, 
in the install guide, it, it kind of walks you through the different codes and, and how to understand what you're reading. All right, so set virtual console. And we want, once again, uh, US here. There we go, US. And back again. All right, configure user accounts. And we're going to set our root password. Re-enter it. Add our username. Uh, absolutely have to make this all lowercase. And then password for that user. Re-enter that password. And back. All right, now we're going to install our desktop environment. Or, you know, as it says, you know, you could install multiple desktops. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is install graphics input, sound drivers. So it'll take care of all that first. And this is, you know, also XORG, that sort of thing. Okay, after installing all that, it'll ask you about your graphics card. If it's an ATI, select yes. To install the open source driver, select no to go through the graphics card menu. And then from uh, if you select no, then you can go through the, uh, the menu right here. So let's pick the AMD ATI. And now we'll install the desktop environments. And like it says here, you can repeat this as many times as you want to pick whatever graphic environments you want. And like I said, you can have multiple if you like. So we got what we got here, Cinnamon, Enlightenment, Gnome Shell. And on Gnome, you see we've got a couple of options here. You can go Minimal, Standard, Gnome, Gnome Shell, um, and then Gnome with all the extras. Um, I did uh, this option number four because um, I've talked to a few people online that went GNOME plus extra and there was just so many GNOME packages on there it's like uh, you know they ended up doing a little back paddling and having to get rid of stuff because of how you know bloated the desktop was but anyway, you know you can see in here you can scroll through the desktops listed pick whatever it is that you want to go with a couple of um, just window managers available as well um, even you know Peck window manager awesome uh, uh, awesome window manager there um, also got the awesome window manager also Fluxbox i3 ice window manager uh, you see just all kinds of uh, options here So since I am a GNOME fan, let's just go with the standard GNOME installation, click OK. And it'll take a little while to install all that. And we'll just kick back and wait and let it do its thing. OK, all that is installed. And you'll see we get this uh, install common packages pop up. And some environments require files to be installed, particularly for permissions, create home folders, file management, all that kind of stuff. So we're going to click yes on that, allow that to install as well. and install network connection manager and you'll see network connection manager has already been installed and enabled so nothing to do there install display manager now depending on what desktop environment you are running you may or may not have to do this in the case of gnome gdm comes with gnome so nothing to install here click back and each step must be followed in order. Okay, okay, we got all that. And we're down to, and I have no idea how to pronounce that. I'm not even going to attempt it. So you're going to run that, and that basically uh, essentially completes your installation. And 
review you can review your configuration files if you would like otherwise just come down to done and click done close installer yes the installer is closed so now we will reboot which was oh let me see what that was alt plus x and we'll do a restart and here's our grub menu Arch Linux that's all that's on there right now it's booting the first time that you boot up um, it does take a little bit longer um, after that uh, you know uh, boot time is really really quick even with running GNOME. Uh, I'm sure that with like XFCE or Mate or you know LXDE it's going to be lightning fast. And so here we are. And there we are, a uh, base GNOME installation. And pull this up. You can see it's got all your standard uh, GNOME applications already installed. Obviously, um, depending on your needs, there's going to be a fair amount that you may or may not have to add. For example, there isn't an Office suite because that's not part of the uh, you know the whole. Uh, GNOME stack, I guess you could call it. So, you know, install LibreOffice or whatever it is that you you prefer to use for, um, you know, your Office suite. And, uh, you know, you just have to kind of go through and see what you got. Now, if we had done um, uh, under GNOME, you, if you remember the different options, one of the options was um, GNOME shell only and basically what you get in that case is you get you know your your GNOME installation and I believe it has the file manager maybe the web browser as well but that's it so anyway that kinda completes our installation so that you can uh, you know get an idea of what it takes to do an install with the evolution installer as you can see it is not all that difficult fairly easy to do and you know compared to a standard arch installation it is fairly quick so hope this helped you out be sure to give us a big old thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and uh, please subscribe if you are not a subscriber as always uh, leave comments questions all that kind of stuff down below and I will see you on the next video thanks a lot